Welcome back. It certainly was a cool day today with temperatures at 70 degrees, winds variable at 6 miles per hour, and the humidity at 26% and the barometric pressure 30.24 and, and steady. Now for the air conditions, it looks like Carlisle, mostly cloudy at 70 degrees. Sanborn, Bicknell, and also Lawrenceville, Illinois are all experiencing some fair skies and are all at 70 degrees. As we move into our U.S. temperatures, there are some warmer temp temperatures along the Gulf Coast, mostly in the 70s and 80s and also 90s with New Orleans at 75 degrees. Now for the rest of the United States, temperatures are looking pretty mild in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and also 70s with Lincoln, Nebraska at 47 and also Boise, Idaho at 62 degrees. Now we do have another warm spot in the southwest around the Death Valley with Havasu uh, City at 64, uh, 85 degrees. As we move into our frontal map, we do have this low pressure system and its associated fronts causing some scattered showers for parts of Idaho, Nevada, and also Utah. Now, as you guys can see, the stationary front extends from the northern plains down into Texas, causing a few scatters in the outer fronts and the outer fronts, as you guys can see right here. Now, this is bringing a few showers in the um, outer bounds of the fronts, and also you guys can notice there are some heavy showers in parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and also Illinois. Now for us, we're not expecting rain in our area until Sunday for, for when this high pressure system moves off into the east. Now for tonight, mostly cloudy skies, light east-northeast winds, low around 48. Tomorrow, partly sunny skies, northeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour with a high of 73. For tomorrow night, mostly clear skies, light northeast winds with a low of 53. Now for our extended forecast, there's a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms Sunday, uh, mostly cloudy with a high of 78 and a low of 62. Then for Monday, there are some showers and thunderstorms with a high of 79 and a low of 59. Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high of 80 and a low of 60. So it looks like the 80s aren't done with us yet, Mitch, as we enter our last official week of the summer. That's right. One more week of summer. Thanks, Danny. Week five of the high school football season is upon us and a big game is on tap for the Lincoln Alices this evening. Cody Cully joins us now with more. Cody? Thanks, Mitch. It's Lincoln versus Jasper tonight at Inman Field, and the Alices will be looking for an upset of their longtime rival. I'll have the details when New Center 22 returns. The Mexican Revolution of 1910, the first political and social revolution of the 20th century, and some say the first to be caught on film. Viva Mexico! Viva! From generals to presidents to infamous revolutionaries, witness a century of defiant victories that impact Mexico to this day. The storm that swept Mexico. On Masterpiece Mystery. Looks like a poisoning description. They couldn't see his face, he had his hood up. What a young lad. Not that sort of hood. What's the wonder about this place and all the monks? They're friars. Do I bear even the slightest resemblance to a detective? No. Where's the repentance? Repentance? Where are we going with this, Robbie? Four murders in five days. Yeah, I can't count, Mom. Inspector Lewis on Masterpiece Mystery. Alice has looked to snap losing streak to Wildcats. Good evening, everyone, for WVUT Sports. I'm Cody Cully. Vincennes Lincoln hosts ninth-ranked Jasper at Inman Field this evening in a Big 8 conference game. The Alice's will be looking to snap a four-game losing streak to the Wildcats, who are coming off their first loss of the season at Heritage Hills a week ago. However, Lincoln is nicked up along the offensive line and may not be entirely healthy for tonight's matchup. Jasper will most likely test the Alice's early by running the football. Quarterback Carson Nixon so far has thrown for just three touchdowns. Tonight's game gets underway at 7.30. The North Knox Warriors have the night off. They will play Nor the North Central Thunderbirds tomorrow afternoon at Indiana State's Memorial Stadium in Terre Haute. Both teams are 2-0 in Southwest 7 Conference play. 
The T-Birds are undefeated and feature a pair of running backs that run out of the wishbone formation. North Knox also likes to keep it on the ground. Senior Zach Stevens has rushed for over 600 yards and 10 scores. Kickoff is scheduled for 1.45 p.m. at Memorial Stadium. The Vincennes Lincoln girls volleyball team down Gibson Southern 25-20, 25-19, 25-23 last night. Taylor Nash had 11 points, 13 digs, and 17 assists. Anisaza Hatton finished with 15 digs. Corbin McCrary had 9 points and 6 kills as the Lady Alice's improved to 14 and 7. Elsewhere, the Reve volleyball team lost to Sullivan 15-25, 16-26, 11-25. South Knox lost to Bar Reeve in 3 games 12-25, 13-25, 13-25. And the North Knox volleyball team fell in 4 games to Lagodi. A Thursday night top 25 college football matchup between SEC schools saw number 3 LSU defeat number 25 Mississippi State 19-6. Jarrett Lee filling in for suspended quarterback Jordan Jefferson threw for 213 yards including a 19-yard touchdown to Reuben Randall to keep the Tigers undefeated at 3-0. The loss continued Mississippi State's frustration against SEC Western Division rivals. The Bulldogs are 2-10 against the West with both those wins coming against rival Ole Miss. The chase for the cup begins this weekend in Chicago. Joe Carter has the details. Since the chase for the cup began in 2004, New Hampshire has been the opening track. Until now, as Chicago serves as the kickoff. I like the racetrack. I think it's great. I think the fans there are really excited about the, the first race in the chase being there. And it's a perfect racetrack for us. A change in the, in the chase schedule is good. Obviously, we've had the same champion the last uh, five years in a row. So for me, we need to uh, switch the chase tracks up. Um, obviously, the first three races typically have been our Achilles heel. Uh, with them changing it now to Chicago leading the chase off, I think that will play more into our hands. I'm really looking forward to kicking off in Chicago. It's uh, probably the closest track to, to my hometown where I grew up in Wisconsin. And, um, you know, it's been a, a pretty good track for us in the past. So I, I feel um, it doesn't matter. You have to, you know, it's about all 10 races are equal. But I feel like we probably have a better chance of starting off strong in Chicago than what we would at New Hampshire. Chicago's past two winners, David Rudiman and Mark Martin, failed to qualify for this year's chase. With the NASCAR Minute, I'm Joe Carter. At the ballparks Thursday, David DeJesus hit a three-run homer to lead the Oakland Athletics past the Detroit Tigers 6-1. Brandon McCarthy pitched seven strong innings as the A's snapped the Tigers' 12-game winning streak. McCarthy allowed one run on five hits to improve to 3-2 with a 2.15 ERA over his past five starts. Delman Young hit a home run for the Tigers, who saw their magic number drop to one to clinch the American League Central title. Pablo Sandoval hit for the cycle to help lead the San Francisco Giants to an 8-5 win over the Colorado Rockies. Sandoval homered in the first, doubled in the second, singled in the fifth, and tripled in the sixth to complete his first cycle of his career, and only the second cycle in the majors this season. The Giants have won five straight and prevented Arizona from moving closer to clinching the NL West. The Diamondbacks lead the Giants by seven games with 12 to play. It's now time for our play of the day. It comes courtesy of the PGA and the BMW Championships. Carmelo Villagas in the bunker on the par three second, but not a problem. He takes a big cut on this one, gets a lot of spin from the ball, and gets it to roll in for the birdie. Take another look as Villagas takes a big hack out of the bunker, but gets great spin in the ball, but an even better roll as it drops right into the cup for the birdie and earns him our play of the day. Mitch, that'll do it for sports. Have a great weekend. Hey, thanks. You too, Cody. Coming up next, a prank places a stolen hot dog statue on a street corner. We'll catch up with the confessed prankster when, he, when we come back. Stay with us.
The Mexican Revolution of 1910, the first political and social revolution of the 20th century, and some say the first to be caught on film. Viva Mexico! Viva! From generals to presidents to infamous revolutionaries, witness a century of defiant victories that impact Mexico to this day. The storm that swept Mexico. Hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and it's Antiques Roadshow's 10-year anniversary. Do you remember these roadshow moments? It's the best I've ever seen, well, ever at any time. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What do you think? Holy mackerel. Oh, yeah, I like it. So We've got a decade's worth of treasures for you on this special edition of Antiques Roadshow. It's Roadshow Remembers next time on this PBS station. A six-foot-tall hot dog statue that mysteriously appeared on a Nebraska street corner is grabbing national attention. Reporter Megan McRoberts shows us why. It's not your typical hot dog. This one sports some sporty kicks, an American flag, and supposedly traveled across the country from a dumpster in California to this front yard in Council Bluffs. There was a sign company, mm -hmm. and they were throwing it away because one of the arms was busted off, and so the arm was in the dumpster, and, well, might as well take it home. But Curtis Wenhold found himself in a pickle when his prized possession was the victim of a late-night prank. The six- to seven-foot statue was found on this street corner, a bus stop, and one concerned woman called saying it was relishing a little too much attention and scaring those children. It looked like someone was in it, so yeah, and it was, it was really kind of creepy it for was us. Freaky. I thought it was going to eat me. But where the statue actually belonged just neighborhoods away, the owner was proud of the attention that it garnished and was disappointed to see nothing but divots in the ground and drag marks where it used to stand. See, let's see if it's bolted down to the yard and see if we can take it with us when we drove by. And lo and behold, it wasn't bolted to the yard. A few boys say they lifted the 400-pound statue over the fence and into their trunk. But he had originally had two arms, but they broke off while we were dragging him. But the boys didn't keep it for long. It was in our house and it was creepy. <laughs> you see the thing, man? <laughs> So the statue, minus its arms, were left for the taking. I'm glad to see him go. Wenhold says he learned his lesson. Probably chain it down. I was thinking about doing it right before it got stolen. But. Since I was able to catch up with the thieves, I'm sure the rightful owner will relish in the fact that he can now get his entire statue back. Council Bluffs police say people from Maryland to California called in claiming the statue was theirs. You can get your own hot dog statue searching online. It sells for about $650. That's all for this evening. For Danny Taborn and Cody Cully, I'm Mitch Columbia. Join us again Monday. Have a great weekend. This is WVUT Vincennes.